What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and this is another Silver Breakdown Guide, and today we are finally getting done with the Oregon's Nest uh, video. I've been working on this one for a while, and I will explain why in just a little bit, uh, but first, let's go ahead and go over the basics here. If you don't know where Oregon's Nest is, it is located east of Altanova. It is in the Valencia region, then directly east of Basham Base, you can see right here node manager is located down here if you right click on the little node thing it will take you to this guy here he does indeed have a daily kafirs quest for you you have to do, uh, complete a quest chain first to unlock it uh, and then after that you will be able to get uh, the daily kafirs quest from there so let's take a look at the loot table uh, for the area and see what we can get here we've got the rokaba helmet uh, we have the Seraph's necklace, as far as I could tell, and uh, we'll get into it when I uh, show you the rotation, how it works. But as far as I could tell, this actually only drops from the elite mobs here, which isn't too much of a problem. Then, of course, we've got black stones, Yona fragments, some Asula weakened stuff. Um, no Kafir stone drop in this area, or if it does, it's not listed in the table, and I also didn't get any, so there's that. Scrolls, of course, and then we do have uh, BMC. Uh, listed there as well. So let me show you how the what we're I guess we're calling rotation works from here But it's very different from at least this the successful way of doing this uh, To get any amount of money here is very different than what we're used to um, for grinding in BDO so this is one of the elite mobs here and they kind of work a little bit like a Mini boss if you will and the way that you're gonna grind this zone isn't gonna be pack to pack If you look on the mini map here You can see you don't really have clusters of mobs like you do in other areas to where moving pack to pack is going to get you Any amount of good uh, money So what you're actually gonna do is engage with the well sturdy guy elite and what happens with these number one They're very sturdy um, This place is AP capped uh, but uh, you know, even with a ton of AP you can see they take a lot of damage but then when you notice there, he spawned all these uh, extra mobs around him. This is basically how you grind this area. See, and then when you kill that pack, he spawns more. So ideally, you want it to not do as much damage as possible to your elite, because um, then you have to move on to the next one. They're everywhere here, however, so it's not that big a deal. But you want to keep your elite around as much as possible. And this is basically the equivalent of killings, killing your packs of mobs, is you're just going to keep going through this, keep your pets looting away, and you just kind of do that. Um, this, when I first started doing this, seemed kind of cool to me, and then over time, um, this got really monotonous, and I kind of found that I'd rather be zipping around, just killing mobs. If this is kind of more your speed, then uh, you'll enjoy this place, but um, this wasn't so much for me. But you can see how long, looking at that guy's health, how long it takes to kill one of those, so if you're being really careful too, I mean, you can just do this for a while. I'm not certain if it does have a timeout uh, time or not, that he would like despawn or something like that. Uh, or just respawn. I know that when he gets below 50% health, he does that little underground thing, and he'll just keep popping up and doing his thing. Um, but yeah, I, have, I haven't gone too many minutes with one to see if they have a despawn. Let me just go ahead and kill him at this point, and actually he's going to do this a lot, so even when you're trying to kill him, it can get a little bit uh, tiresome because he'll dive underground. Uh, we'll just finish this up. Yeah, see, he'll go underground again. The mobs keep spawning. It also kind of helps if you are just you're here to grind uh, that he keeps diving underground because you won't uh, run the risk of hitting him and killing him if you're not trying to uh, at some point. So the other thing, if you've noticed in the uh, in the screen on the left for my my loot there, you do, they do also drop the uh, Wargon hide and Wargon blood as well. And there you go, Seraph's necklace from uh, from the elite. So that's actually the second one I've ever gotten here. Uh, for it. That's kind of funny. We did it while recording, but awesome. So anyways, what I'm saying, the, we've got the Wargon blood and the Wargon uh, hides, uh, as well as Wargon meat does, uh, war sorry, Wargon hide is your trash loot, Wargon meat, along with the Wargon blood that drops. I did add those into the loot table because they do sell and they will, it does add up to a little bit of bonus extra money uh, for the area. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's no rotation. Just jump on the elites. You get the idea. Kill the packs of mobs as they spawn. And when you're ready for another one, you literally just keep walking down the path and otherwise then you'll run into another one. Um, the one before it will be respawned uh, very quickly, uh, considering how long you're going to take on each mob when you're not trying to kill him. So let me get the uh, loot tables up and let's take a look of how it went. I'm sure you saw in the title of the video, I did not do a 20 hours grind at this spot. I only did 10. And the reason for that is this was mind numbing to me and I just couldn't do it. I'm more of a kill packs of mobs type than getting this guy to spawn over and over and over. And also, as you can see, the overall loot wasn't super impressive to keep me enthralled. So despite my efforts to, to crunch out another 10 hours and just get this done, I have too many other grind videos I want to get done on my plate that uh, I, I just decided to call this one at 10. 
So Rakabas came out to about 1.3 in uh, in 10 hours, so it was a little bit more than uh, one per hour that we got there. Asula was between two and three. Uh, BMCs, I only got three throughout uh, all 10 hours that were on there. Like I said, Kafiris I did have on the sheet, but didn't drop. I really thought it was going to be uh, that they could drop here, and it just wasn't listed in the loot table because it's a little weird. But uh, it, I didn't have any drop. If they do drop here and it isn't listed in the loot table, then I just had a string of bad luck there. Dust was super unimpressive um, just because of the number of the mobs that you're actually killing is pretty pretty high, uh, but wasn't anything to, to write home about. 12 Blackstones per hour, which wasn't too great. That is a 15, not a 75 right there. Uh, sorry about that. And then we have our trash loot is divided. Um, but I started out, oh no, I thought I started at four. So we were around 5k trash loot, give or take a bit there. I did log black energy residue. So if you are interested in collecting those, it wasn't too bad again, because we're talking about high density and mobs, uh, did come out with four Yona fragments throughout the hour. The blood and the meat was right around 60 ish uh, across the board there. And scrolls kind of saved uh, the money making in general, especially since they're super expensive right now while I'm recording this. And then you can say I did get one syrup uh, drop from that and you just experienced my second one, which would have gone there. So worst hour that we had was the first one, which is pretty normal when I'm starting a new spot at 22 mil uh, across the board there. And our best hour was only at 35 mil. So granted, this was only 10 hours of data instead of 20, uh, but uh, that's not very impressive. Came out averaging a bit below. 30 mil there at 28.5. So nothing really impressive to write home about. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this spot unless you really, really, really enjoy this type of grinding, something that's different for you um, and spawning the mobs. Uh, Cause there's just no, your upper end is those Serap necklace drops. And as you can see too, within an 11 hour time frame, is not super impressive when you could be at Fogans or Nagas or something like that. So overall spot was a different feel, a definitely a big break from what you're used to in grinding in BDO, but it's definitely not for me personally and not something that I would recommend to somebody that does enjoy uh, endlessly running through packs of mobs or if you like things like Achman or Histria that are a bit more challenging, you shouldn't be in this zone anyways uh, to start with, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's necessarily anti new player friendly because it does have Marnie stones available for this zone um, that did come out after I had done the, the data sheets. They didn't exist while I was doing it, but they are available now. So the XP gain can be okay. The SP gain is actually pretty decent. And again, you are actually dealing with high density mob, high density amounts of mobs, thanks to the way that they spawn across those elites. So that is it for this video. Be sure to like it if you did enjoy it. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so that you get notifications when new videos go out. Um, I do have more of these silver breakdown guides in the process that I'm working on. Just wanted to get rid of this one out of my face and off my plate so I never have to come back here again. It wasn't completely terrible. I actually thought it was pretty cool the first few hours, uh, like a change of pace, but it, it really just became the same thing after the same thing, which most of BDO is, but it's just not what I was used to. And the payout was making it not very appealing to continue uh, running throughout the rest of it. So uh, next one that we got coming out, I believe I'm going to be redoing the uh, newly updated Poly Forest. So give me some time to get the data for that. I kind of wanted to wait till the Marnie Stones get released for them, which hopefully should happen with the patch that's coming up tomorrow as of the date of recording that. So hopefully that gets released and then Poly's Forest will be up next. If it's not, um, I have plenty of other ones that are recommended to go to. So it'll be something else other than Poly's Forest till we do get Marnie Stones. Anyways, that is going to be it for this video. Everybody, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Uh, one more thing I did forget to mention, if you do want to catch uh, a live stream for any of that, there is a link in the description below to the Twitch page. So you can just click on that, head on over to the Twitch page and get a and hit the follow button. So you get a notification uh, whenever the live stream is on. It's usually four to five times a week. And if you're not sure when, always on weekends and it does differ days during the week, there is a schedule also listed both on my Twitter and on the same Twitch page there. Uh, so you can just check that out to kind of see when it's going to be live if you haven't already done so uh now that's it for this video everybody thank you for watching and i'll see you next time Baby.